And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I always feel bad when I recommend a game that is difficult to find. When I first uh, reviewed Archaeology the Card Game uh, a few years ago, it was a very limited edition. It was 100 copies. I had one of those 100 copies. Uh, that's kind of difficult to get a hold of. Fortunately, Z-Man Games has repicked it up. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no changes to the rules of the game, but I thought that now that it was more widely available, that people might want to see a visual representation of the game rather than my written review. So let's take a look at it. This is very similar to how the game looks like when you set it up. You have five cards that are set here in the middle of the table, and these are, that's the market cards you can buy from. Over here is the pyramid. There's some piles of cards that are in the pyramid, and then each player starts with a handful of cards. The cards are what's important about the game. If you're going to leave, you need to shut the doors. This is very similar as to how the game looks like when it starts up. Five cards are placed here in the middle. This is the market. Uh, over here is the pyramid. There's three piles of cards of treasures in the pyramid. You have a draw deck. And everybody starts with some cards in their hand. These cards are the focus of the game. So let's take a closer look at one of them. Here's a card. At the top is a pot chart. Its value is one by itself. However, if I sell them to the museum, you can see that if I sell two of them to the museum, they're worth two. Three is worth three. Four is four. But if you have five, I guess you have the whole pot and it's worth 15. This little number here, 18, shows that there are 18 of these cards in the deck. See, a parchment scrap is very similar, it's, but that's 1, 2, 3, 10 when it comes to the value. But look at this valuable card I have. It's worth 3 by itself. 2 are 7, 3 are 14, 4 are 24, and 5 of them are, fifth, are 40, but there's only 8 of them in the deck. So I have to figure out the best way to use these. On my turn, the very first thing I do is I draw a card and add it to my hand. Woohoo, a coin. That's not a bad card to get. Then I have options. I can trade cards in the middle as long as I do value-wise. For example, I could put this coin down and I could trade both pot charts here, two, three, four, and I could take both broken cups into my hand. I can trade any cards I want back and forth as long as it's an even value. I can also put cards in front of me. For example, I could put this talisman in front of me. I sold it to a museum. However, if I do that, I can never add to that set. I can put some more talismans down later, but they're not part of this set. So putting one of these down doesn't make much sense in the beginning of the game. It's only worth three. I'd much prefer to get multiples to get better points. However, two broken cups equals 15 points. Hey, that's a good set. I'll lay that down. That's 15 points for the end of the game. And then my turn is over. And turns keep going as players draw cards. If you draw a thief card, you can steal a card from someone else. This is, a, this is critical because you can see cards that people buy from the market. You'll know what people are collecting and it's dangerous to keep cards in your hand. These thief cards keep the game from being boring. Also, there is sandstorm cards. When these show up, and you also keep track of how many there are, it depends on how many players are in the game, uh, these sandstorms cause people to lose half the cards in their hand. So you better not get a big hand of cards. Map cards are interesting. You can use them for three by themselves, or you can trade them in the middle. But if you have one map card on your turn, you can discard that card and take this small chamber, which has three treasures, into your hand. Oh, wow, man, did I luck out there. I got two of these Pharaoh's Masks. If you have two maps, you can discard them to take five treasures. If you have three maps, you can discard them to take this big pile of seven treasures. Considering there's only six maps in the game, I very rarely see the third, the three map chamber taken. However, it is very possible to do so. That's basically the gist of the game. You keep going until the deck has gone through, and then everyone basically counts the number of points of the cards they have in front of them. Whoever has the most points is the winner. There's a lot of features that I enjoy about archaeology. One, that it takes 20 minutes or less to play. It's very simple. And two, 
it, it's a very basic economic system. Everything is equal to some degree, but some cards are worth more. If I get five pot shards, I'm going to play them down. That's 15 points. But three pot shards is worth three points. And so maybe it's better for me to trade those in to get one talisman, because I already have another talisman, and two talismans are seven points. Uh, it's just, it, it's really intriguing how the game works. It works okay with four and three. But I really enjoy it as a two-player game, although a three-player game is really well done. It's one of those games that if I have three players, I say, hey, here's an interesting idea. Some people think that the thieves and sandstorms are too random, but I would disagree on that. Because first of all, you know how many are in the game. Every time they come out, we set them aside to keep track of how many have come out. So if you know there are many thieves or many sandstorms in the game, you are going to be careful about keeping a big hand of cards. Because a sandstorm will take half of it away, and the thief means other people will steal from you and the, knowing thieves are around will keep you from keeping good cards. You won't bank on getting a thief yourself, but you should be prepared for when someone comes after you with one. The quality of the cards is excellent. The game itself is very easy to teach. I can teach and play it very quickly. It's, the setup time is nice. It comes in a small card box. I can't say enough good things about this little card game. It was a real big surprise when I first played it, coming from Australia. I'm really glad that Z-Man Games picked it up. I see that it won the best Australian game of 2008. Uh, I, 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 I think they're definitely right there. Get it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.